on this. Okay. Hi, my name is Jun, and I'll be responding to Stephanie Barcella's claim that no food <laughs> is unhealthy. Uh, her secondary claims are one, milk consumption leads to high blood pressure. Two, milk consumption is problematic for digestion. And three, milk consumption leads to obesity. Um, her first claim was that milk increases blood pressure, but after further research, I found that it does act, it does not increase blood pressure, but actually lowers blood pressure. Um, milk is nutritionally very dense. In one cup of milk, it contains 305 milligrams of calcium, 27 milligrams of magnesium, and 366 milligrams of potassium. And these are all minerals that help regulate the blood pressure in our body. A study by the Dietary Approach to Stop Hypertension, hypertension is abnormally high blood pressure, recommends us to consume actually two to three servings of low-fat dairy products, which includes milk. And furthermore, Harvard researchers did a little study on the hypertension as well. This, this study included 28,886 middle-aged women and elderly women. Researchers discovered that women who drink milk and consume large amounts of vitamin D and calcium through dietary sources actually lowered their risk of developing hypertension. And so the regular and controlled consumption of milk actually lowers our blood pressure rather than increasing it. Um, her second point reads that milk consumption is problematic for digestion. I uh, just reminded her that her main claim is that milk consumption isn't healthy, basically saying that milk is bad for our body. Um, however, her, along with their second claim, her subpoints go on to argue that the majority of people are and will eventually become lactose intolerant. So this argument is really circled around people that are lactose and the assumption that peop all people will eventually become lactose intolerant. I think that it is out of context for a main proposition that states that milk consumption is healthy, unhealthy in general. Although people who are lactose intolerant cannot drink milk and have a hard problem digesting it, milk doesn't make a person lactose intolerant. Milk doesn't, is not detrimental to our uh, digestive system, so the claim that milk consumption is bad is both irrelevant to the main argument and false since it has no link to the develop of, development of lactose intolerance. And lastly, uh, the last claim that she stated was that milk consumption leads to obesity. Uh, generally, for a person to drastically gain weight, they just need to intake more calories than they can burn off. And milk is, like any other food, is counted the same way in calories. Uh, for a person to gain significant, a significant out of, uh, amount of weight, let alone become obese just on milk, would mean that they would have to intake 4 to 5 pounds more than the suggested 1 to 2 cups every day. And although milk does contain nutrients that may cause weight gain, if you drink the intended amount of, of servings, these nutrients are actually more beneficial to your body than harmful, and they won't make you obese. It won't make you gain weight significantly. And so these are my, this is my claim to step through our Thank you. Thank you. All right, well, June, you did the uh, same sort of thing that Brian did. You had a good start. You identified the claim. The structure's right there. You signpost each of those points as you get to it. On the first one, uh, you have a counterclaim that you're presenting almost immediately. You've got evidence that you immediately apply to that. I thought that was pretty reasonable. Uh, you've got good counter evidence on those points. One of the things that I see missing sometimes from uh, the argument is any discussion of what the advocate's information was, whether the advocate's information was sufficient to even reach those conclusions. There's sometimes some reasoning challenges, like on the third point where, you, in essence, you're saying... Um, 
you know, that you would have to consume it uh, to a, a much larger degree for it to have any of these negative impacts. That's that's a good reasoning challenge on the point that the advocate presented, uh, but there's no discussion of the evidence that was cited, which we, because we'd just gone over the other speech, it it's moderately linked in the evidence that the advocate presented at best. And so there, I think there are some limitations on that information, and it's probably best not to put all your eggs in the one basket, but try to have, I'm sorry, that's a dairy reference. Uh, <laughs> it, it's probably best to have um, both counterclaims and evidence challenges and reasoning challenges when you can find them. And I think that there are some that uh, get missed here occasionally. But I, I thought you explained things very well when you do present your reasoning challenges. Um, uh, the argument on the second point that milk doesn't cause the lactose intolerance, I thought that that was uh, pretty reasonable. And just digging a little bit, I just thought about this sitting here. You know that there are milk products where the lactose has been removed to lactose -free. yeah and uh, so so it's like is that harmful for people if they can consume that all of a sudden that's not a problem and that's that's you know i w i wasn't researching your topic but it like i said it did take me at least two speeches though to think of that <laughs> you know so uh but you had two weeks so you know maybe maybe there would be some other issues out there on the table that you could take advantage of all right, thank you.